Hi and welcome to today's new quick tip. My name is Peter Flores and today we're going to cover a very common problem when we see a demo reels that some people want to output the outlines of the retos in order to kind of showcase the shapes on top of their actual work. So for this we're going to go with a very simple uh, method. I'm not going to overcomplicate it too much. I like simplicity. Uh, so we have our traditional plate in here and we just created a quick roto. So traditionally what we will have in Nuke is we don't have a way of outputting the actual outlines of our shapes. So we will end up either screen grabbing the uh, the viewer by using these buttons at the bottom to uh, actually record it or just screen grab it with a recorder like QuickTime or something like that and then overlaying that over our final footage. But for those of you who are students that want to present your rotos, there's just a, an easier way to actually accomplish that. And after you have done your keys and or you have done your, your rotor shapes and you have animated those over time, what we could do then is hit Q here to kind of turn off. I like to first see my roto. What do I have and how I'm going to output it over for my demo reel. So essentially in this case, I have the roto of this character with the motion blur and everything uh, added to it. We have all the hair detailing and everything like that added to it as well. And all the little details from the gloves and motion blur as well. And I like to put in a, in a kind of either a gray background or a kind of uh, pseudo gray background, uh, in this case, checkboard pattern for it to be, in order to be able to present it and present it well. So I'm using right now an Atmix, uh, but you could also use an O. Uh, the next thing that we sometimes you will see that they will ask you for is maybe a 50% overlay to see how things look. And that is very easily accomplished by just taking um, your original plate, of course, and then taking the alpha of that, in this case, uh, uh, this generation here, and then when you merge them over, the only thing that you really need is to set your alpha channel on the A input, set it to the alpha channel, automatically it jumps into the red, and there you go, you have your, your overlay. So you could set it up to 50% by just putting 0.5 on the mix, and if somebody wants to see your roto, that's a, a great way of actually just displaying the roto over the elements. What they're trying to see is if you did motion blur and how that covers the character, uh, your hair detailing, and if you covered everything that needs to be covered, there's any holes or anything like that. So essentially that's what we got here, and you can see how the character just, uh, we could see the motion blur, and all of a sudden, very quickly, we could see there's a mistake on that roto. Uh, so it's a great way of actually uh, looking through and kind of doing a kind of great QC or quality control. So let's go now for what we made this video for and is to actually output the splines. So after I created my rotor shapes, like I said, I tend to colorize them and stuff like that so I could identify different areas. We tend to organize them, categorize them, name them. Um, but what I like to do is a very simple with my roto, I'm looking at the alpha. I like to take all my shapes and by default, they're gonna look something like this. They're going to be set to over, so it's going to look solid. So what I like to do is I like to go ahead and select all my rotor shapes and set it to a blending operation like a difference. Uh, it will work with exclusion, minus, from, and even a plus, but I'm for this demo, I'm only going to do the difference. And what this is going to do is create a difference between all the shapes, right, all the intersections and everything like that. Now, from there, we don't need this uh, frame hold. I'm going to do NH detection on the alpha channel. And you're gonna see that now what it does is detects pretty much all the edges based on all those alphas. Now with the dilate, we are able to control the actual width of the shape that we're trying to use. And then I'm only using a simple one color scenario where I use a key mix. And then when we look at back to RGB, you can see that now we have our shapes. Now, if you look at this, it's also applying the motion blur that we have on the roto node. So in this case, it might be distracting, it might be something that you don't want to have in your shot. You might only want to show the shapes without having the motion blur, but this is kind of the example of how it looks. It's very easy, very easy to output. So if you have different characters that you want to show different colors for different variations, you will be able to have different rotos with different color variations as well. Now let's jump to the other side and what do we do if we don't want any of that motion blurring in the actual shape? Well, we'll have the same thing here. In this case, I have the same colors. It's set all to difference as well. Uh, again, we're looking at the alpha in this case, so make sure that you switch to an alpha so we look at that. And by doing the same technique, but having no feathering on any of the shapes, we're able to uh, just bring it back to the same width type of outline. If you have any feathering, it will. you could actually just uh, remove the feathering to remove the width that you're gonna have on those outlines as well. Uh, so you could use the same technique of the dilate to dilate it a little bit bigger or a little bit smaller, depends on the width that you want. And then using a key mix, let's go back to our RGB. 
you're able now to get all your shapes uh, in the area that needs they need to be. And that's pretty much it. So um, if you want to get a little bit more complicated, you could add some colors as well. So this one, I just left it in independent. Um, and you could just go ahead and pre-multiply just the edge detectant to kind of get that those different variations of colors. But the problem with this technique is that wherever they intersect, you're going to see variations of colors. So you will see a mixture of those. Uh, for that, you will need to divide the, the rotor shapes into separate shapes in order to get a better scenario. Um, um, so there's different techniques that you could do. Uh, but that's pretty much the basic idea. Again, you could create any type of outline that you want, uh, any type of color that you want in order to create the illusion of those. So this pretty much has been it for the new quick tip for today. So again, this is Pedro Forrest for VFX Lunchbox. Enjoy guys and have a good time.